Hi, I'm NRA's Mark Keith, and today I'm doing a little test with True Velocity Ammunition. You know, when it comes to rifle cartridges, they've pretty much been the same for about 150 years. You have a projectile, you have powder, you have a primer, and a brass case. So once we got center fire cartridges, of course, uh, they're reloadable. But this case is not reloadable, but it doesn't need to be. So what True Velocity has done is develop, frankly, the next generation of rifle ammunition. When you look at this case, you'll see there's no brass. You have a steel case head, you have a two-piece polymer case. Of course, this is a 168 grain Nosler hollow point boat tail bullet, and then a powder charge. The True Velocity guys are in the running for the next generation squad automatic weapon contract. And part of that deal is this cartridge. They have a 6.8 cartridge that's in contention, but this is a 308 Winchester, 762 by 51. And what's unusual about this case is, of course, it's made of recyclable polymer. But when they, you go to make a case out of polymer, there's some things that you could control that you simply can't control with brass. When a brass cartridge case is made, it's headed, it starts with a cup, and then you form the case. The thing about this case is it's done by injection molding. So you can really hold the tolerances. You can hold the primer pocket to a very fine dimension. And what the True Velocity guys discovered is there's some internal things that they can do with the cartridge case to make it more efficient. So you're ending up with less gunpowder delivering the same amount of velocity. And of course, they're using a Nosler hollow point bow tail bullet, which is a very fine projectile. For hunters, there's also a 165 grain Nosler AccuBond, which is a very, very good hunting bullet. Deep penetrating, quite accurate. But the cartridge we're looking at today, of course, is the 168 match bullet. So when these guys make these cases, it's not the same process as you see in a standard manufacturing facility that produces ammunition. They're, they're not dealing with large strips of brass that they're then turning into cups and then punching out and then trying to hold the dimensions. No, the dimensions they get here are done basically by a robot and their quality control is outstanding. So every one of these cases is exactly the same dimension as the case before it, which is really quite, a, quite an accomplishment. So when you look at this case, you'll see that you have a steel case head. Now the thing about a steel case head is, of course, it's stronger than brass. It's about three times stronger. You have a conventional primer, and then they use a two-part process to actually create the case itself. Now these cases can be recycled. Uh, of course, the uh, case head is steel, so you can pick it up with a magnet, and that applies not just to the exterior dimensions of the case, but the internal dimensions as well. So what we've noticed is when we shoot this over the chronograph, we get very low standard deviations. That means there's not a lot of difference from run round to the next in terms of velocity, which in particular for long range shooting can make quite a big difference. So the gun I have today is a Springfield Waypoint 2020. This one has a carbon fiber barrel, uh, chambered of course in 308 Winchester. And we'll see, actually see what this ammunition, the true velocity does over the chronograph. So one of the things that the military really likes about this cartridge case construction is it's lightweight. It's about 30% lighter than using brass. The other thing too about this polymer, it's not a heat sink like brass. So in particular for machine gun applications, which you know don't really apply to the average hunter or shooter, you're not getting as much heat. And of course, the cartridges weigh about 30% less. I've been on some mountain hunts where I thought my boot laces were too heavy. So, but really, unless you're going up a mountain, the ammunition weight savings is not a big deal. It's the performance that you're looking for out of true velocity. Now I fired these cartridges out of semi-automatic rifles, my M1A, my Colt 901 but also through the bolt action rifle. All those guns are sub MOA, as is this one, so we're getting groups that are less than an inch at 100 yards. But the real thing that we're looking for is consistency in this ammunition. All right, so let's take our next five round string and see how we do when it comes to standard deviation. This is a, typically a 2,650 foot per second load, and let's just see how consistent it is. So 
So this is what we're looking for. When you look at the chronograph, now this was five shots, typically we'll test 10, but for this five shots, the standard deviation was only five, which is actually quite impressive. At long range, that can play real dividends. So for more on True Velocity Ammo, of course, go to AmericanRifleman.org or go to TVMO.com.